Thank all our speakers for taking time out of their very busy schedules right now. And most importantly, all of you for coming out here today to listen to what, what has to be said. We also have uh, sample letters to send in to the Federal Railroad Administration. Their comments, the draft environmental impact statement, and our comments are due by December 3rd. So we have letters you can sign and drop in the mail, or you go to our website and download those. Uh, there's also a few other things over there. The U.S. Coast Guard survey is due November 1. You can pick that up as well. Um, one thing I just played a song. I was talking about uh, paving over our paradise. We do not want Fortress Investment Group. It's the New York City hedge fund manager that ultimately owns all aboard Florida and Florida East Coast Industries. We don't want them to run a train through our paradise. And that's why Florida Not All Aboard was founded. We plan to be able to stop this train for ruining our paradise. All Aboard Florida is owned by Fortress. It's a over a $60 billion hedge fund. And they are out of, we're here living with the impacts. Why they're over a thousand miles away planning to run these trains through our communities. But I know together, we can stop this train. We can. Today, we have started up over eight months ago, Florida Not All. To date, I am so excited. We have over 32,000 signatures on a petition. It's incredible. It's incredible. And it's a, a large united voice. We're standing together. We also have over 30 petitions from communities and organizations from every county from Bavard down to Miami-Dade. The latest resolution was from the Treasure Coast League of Cities, which is comprised of 13 different Treasure Coast cities. Again, we're all uniting together. Since the inception of Florida Not All Aboard, we have some other opposition groups that came up. And the more opposition, the better. So we're excited about this. We have Care Florida that has formed, as well as Citizens Against the Train Fund that has formed, and the Marine Industry Association. We're all battling this train. And not only that, most importantly, we've had numerous elected officials stand up and join our fight. And that's what's so important. You know, we know they don't have a vote, but we've asked them to be our voice, and they have. Uh, one of the most, uh, one of the very first elected officials that did come on board to be our voice, Congressman Patrick Murphy. Since District 18 in the U.S. met him when I went to Washington, D.C. advocating for the stoppage of the Lake Okeechobee discharges in the fall of 2013. I was so impressed with what a strong leader and voice he had for the people. But that is why I contacted him in February when I first started at Florida Not All Aboard. He listened and he was very concerned. And you know, before we had 2,500 people on our petition, he had actually set up communications for the communities to give input about the impacts and he set up a, uh, a meeting with Secretary Fox to share concerns at the federal level. This was huge, and from here it has grown. He's also went to the government accountability to ask about uh, the feasibility of this project for them to look into it. But I'll let him talk about that more. I just want to say thank you, Congressman Murphy. We appreciate you being our voice and standing with us. Let's hear it for Casey. Come on, all her efforts. She just gave some of the numbers, but she didn't give the most important number. This is over, what, 32,000 people have signed up on this petition against Not All Aboard Florida. That's because of you, Casey, so thank you. Uh, but, but it's also because of you all being here. Uh, you know, this is so important. Uh, and this is what I tell everybody to all these different rallies, all these different events, when they say, you know, Patrick, are we going to be able to stop this? Because of you and with this group's support, with Casey, with all the other groups out there, we're going to be able to do something here. Imagine uh, yourself me going to sit with the Secretary of Transportation and I go I'm voicing our concerns if I go with the letter that has say five signatures on it what do you think you know he's gonna say how I show up you know a couple weeks ago and I got to talk to the secretary and I said we have 32,000 signatures in my community and we are just getting started that carries some weight right so everybody out there it says oh well, I don't know it's just a signature does it matter yes it matters right that goes somewhere we can do something with that so it's really important that we continue to spread this that 32 isn't nearly large enough we've got to keep growing it and don't take for granted that your next door neighbor you know your co-worker your family member is signed up yet all right it's just like voting oh what's one vote well enough. so everyone here hopefully can do their part today and getting you know 10 more signatures getting you know 10 more people to learn about the problems uh, with this train you know, whether it's the safety whether it's the traffic the maritime concerns uh, or just the we've got some serious concerns of us I had an opportunity to uh, go to the Jupiter Medical Center about three weeks ago I was talking with the emergency room operator the ambulance driver the CEO of the hospital 
And they made it very clear that there are numerous hospitals up and down right on the train tracks. You know, God forbid one of us is ever in the back of one of these ambulances or someone we know. And in a circumstance where seconds you know, can mean the difference between life or death and you've got a freight train going by, 10, 15 months, what, what do you do? You're stuck. That's unacceptable. Completely unacceptable. And right now, uh, the company all aboard Florida, and I'm sure Casey's going to talk about this a little bit, uh, has tried to change gears in their financing. You see, initially they have for a $1.75 billion RIF loan. It's a loan that comes through the Department of Transportation. That is your taxpayer money. They applied for it, and we've been raising you know, continual red flags. I've been working with Congressman Bill Posey just to the north. I think he's up here today. Uh, in a bipartisan manner, we reached out and we said, look, we want an independent financial feasibility study on this train. There's not a single train in this country that makes money, right? Why would this passenger be different? They're all subsidized by another entity, by another government. No reason to think this is going to be any different. So we asked for that independent study, and uh, the company now all aboard Florida changed gears. They decided they're going to go for what's called a PAP, a private activity bond. Uh, Casey will probably explain this a little bit more, but uh, we've got to continue raising these red flags. And regardless of how they try to get their financing, whether it's government or whether it's private, that doesn't mitigate against the safety concerns that we have. That doesn't change the ambulance that can't cross over. It changes the, the, the fact that the bridges are going to be closed 30 to 40 minutes every hour. You know, two of the three most problematic bridges in the whole system are right in this community. The St. Lucie and the Loxahatchee. Two of the three most problematic are right here. Can you imagine if you're a boater and you live west of the train tracks and you're trying to get out and you've got, you know, 10 minutes? Imagine a little wind, a little tide, a little current. And you've got 100 boats that are lined up to get out. You're asking for a serious safety hazard. So we'll get into the numbers there, too, because as it turns out, uh, the numbers that uh, the company put forward in their uh, environmental impact statement were off by about, what, 70%? Yes. They're off by about 20% for how many boats actually in land. So uh, we've got to keep them honest. And that's what uh, today is about. That's what your activism is about. It is continuing to shine a light on exactly what's going on. Now, the Coast Guard, uh, we, we are continuing to demand that they come up and do hearings on this to listen to the very specific concerns because we feel that's one of the areas that we can really wedge in there. And the Coast Guard uh, hasn't set a date yet, but I really, really hope that everyone here and, and many more will attend these hearings. And there are many occasions where we, you know, yell and scream and cheer and we have signs and we have to continue doing that. When we have these Coast Guard meetings, not only do we need to do that, but we need to come up with some very specific concerns for why this train is a problem. The Coast Guard needs to extrapolate the information that we are going to give them and do an analysis of it. So we can't just show up and say, yeah, we're against it because of the noise, right? That, that's the circumstance. We've got to show up and we've got to say, hey, uh, I'm a commercial fisherman, say, and I use this inlet, you know, five times a week. Here's my, if my uh, opportunity to get in and out of that inlet is affected, uh, I'm not going to be able to use them. This will affect the commerce and this community by X amount, right? That commercial fisherman needs to give his story. If Reno, you know, say west of the train tracks, and they can account for how many boats will not be able to get in or out. They need to account for it. If someone here uh, has a house or is a realtor that knows about uh, the price of a home that has gone down because of the train, we've got to make sure the coast can And they can take all these specific stories, extrapolate that into a real analysis of what this is going to mean for our community. So put your think caps on, come up with these very specific stories as a community. If we have thousands and thousands of these stories, the Coast Guard is going to have to do their part, right? But this is teamwork. Again, this is something I can do alone. I've got to do it with, with all of you. Uh, you know, I'm going to continue working with all the state officials. I'm not going to start naming them because I'll get in trouble. But, you know, working with the, the local, state, and federal officials, I'm going to continue the community's concerns. I know we are all 100% united against all aboard Florida. But we do this. We've got to grow these groups. We've got to continue signing up on groups like Florida Not All Aboard, helping Casey's doing a phenomenal job. So uh, thank you all for being here. Let's go spread the word. And Casey, thank you for doing this.